Hi there and welcome to Busternet. Yes, this is the show I like to call Game Changer. It's a chance for me to delve into your safe, share some insights and hopefully um, I get to experience a, a, a game from a league that I've never played in. And uh, this is one of those. Um, it's a, a safe submitted by Altation. This actually comes from the SI forums. So if you want to have your saves looked at in Game Changer, you can start a thread in the SI forums. I might pick it up. Um, Put as much information as you can, including a link to your to your save uh, that you can do as a DM to me, or and you can start a thread, uh, and uh, I will pick it up. Um, I will ask a couple of questions, and um, there are also other people there who might want to share some insight. So that lots of people can participate in this. So this particular one comes from the SI forums, and uh, it's a save for their features Galatasaray. Now this is a storied club of Turkey. You know Turkish Turkish football saw its heyday 2002 World Cup. You know the fastest goal ever scored in a World Cup, and they didn't even have the ball at the kickoff. 10.8 seconds, if I remember, Hakan Shakur scored the goal. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Now Galatasaray is a club. They've won 20 league titles, so they're a very, very strong club. And this save comes to me from uh, a perspective where the the manager wants to do better in Europe. Um, when I'm looking at the when I'm looking at how they've done well. As a as a they they are, they're doing quite okay in the league, but you know there are occasional lapses right against Kasim Pasa. Right, we're 15 in the table, zero zero draw away from home, and then Besiktas away from home we lost one zero. So the question mark I gotta ask is, what did you do in this game that you know you you had you cracked the woodwork twice, uh, you had a lot nine long shots. So when I if I were to analyze. Uh, the match itself, I'll probably start very simply with shots, right? So looking at just the shots that comes, comes, whatever the name is, okay, K, we'll just call him K because I'm so sorry, I can't really pronounce Turkish names. I'm trying my best here. <laughs> so they, they have some, you shunted them wide, but they have some decent shots in and around the box. So this uh, 40th minute, this, uh, we can watch the highlights, but I probably won't. These are your chances, right? A lot of chances outside the box, but if you're looking at just these alone, not too many good chances. When I went through your matches looking for some good chances, um, you can see the, the lack of support coming from the flanks. You drop in across, really, you're depending on crossing to score goals, very low percentage. Um, these crosses are notoriously low percentage uh, events in the game, right? So you've got corners, you, you had a corner here. Uh, goes right, Zadas, uh, boot, uh, you know, he basically kicked that. So what, once in a while, you have to look at 3D to give you a better assessment of how your team is doing. So just looking at those matches, hmm, some, there's something a bit off about the tactic. But before I go into the, the whole, all these matches and actually breaking down your transitions, let's take a look at the whole save as a whole. Um, I normally like to look at finances because if I'm managing a side like Atletasaray, right, if I want to, you know, win the Champions League, I first have to make sure that my bank balance is always like 200 to 300 million. I'm not joking. You got to be able to have a solid wage budget. Your wage budget currently is only 4 million pounds a month. We're looking at top tier clubs, 8 million to 9 million. That's the that's the, the range that you're operating in. So you're still away quite uh, distance away from where you need to be. In order for you, for you to get there, you've got to start generating a lot of revenue. And how do you do that? Playing as a club in a league that's ranked 10th in Europe. You essentially become a club that, um, you become a selling club, but you become an intelligent selling club. So every time you have players in your squad and you, you think you can offload them, you you have to have a legacy plan in place for you to bleed young talent and bring them into the main team. So essentially what you're doing is you have a strategy for scouting and talent, developing them, having a system in place for you to assess these players based on certain attributes that you may want to see in your team. A certain ethos, a certain quality, the, the way you play your football. You're probably going to be playing the same kind of tactic throughout the course of your career, <laughs> developing this team. The youngsters learn that tactic when they're young. They come into the first team, they fit straight into the system. So you always have options to move players in and out. That makes it easier for you to sell players. Now, when you're selling these players off, you're gonna have two strategies. One, you wanna you wanna play those players who are good enough for your first team. If a offer comes in for those players, and your chances are 
12 million is going to be too good an offer for you to pass up. You have to tag on percentage of next sale, not percentage of profit from next sale, percentage of next sale. Why? Because if, let's take an example, let's say Reading picked up a 19-year-old player from your club. He goes on to play well for Reading. And then after that, Manchester United picks him up, wants, to, wants him. So Reading decides to sell the player for... 13 million pounds. They bought him from you for 12, they sell it to United for 13. That's a 1 million profit. If you take a percentage of profit from next year, you need to take a percentage of the 1 million after the you know agent fees and whatever is deducted from there, you're probably gonna get nothing. But if you do a percentage of prof if you do a percentage of next sale, then you get a bigger chunk of the pie. So that's what you want to do. The second thing you're looking at is loan fees. So once your players start devel uh, developing, you can even look at a strategy where First team players who are decent or good get loaned out. Risky, yes, but they can. these players can attract loan fees. Like I have a player in my, one of my clubs and I have loaned him to a Russian side and they are giving me £200,000 per month plus paying 100% of his wages. £200,000 a month in a loan fee. I'm making a, just a loan from this player about £2.4 million. Pounds. That's a lot of money from one player. Can you imagine what it'd be like if you had six players like that? So you want to have a strategy for making money and loan fees are a fantastic way of making money. So this is what some smaller clubs do. You need a bigger profit uh, margin so that you can reinvest it into the club by improving your youth facilities, improving your junior coaching wage budget so that the quality of a new gen improves. When the quality of a new gen improves, there's a cycle of you know financial improvement for your club as well. So you gotta have to have a plan in place for you to do that. Now, if I'm looking at your board, you've done well. You're improving training. You're bringing youth facilities. I would definitely look at in increasing the junior coaching budget as well. So this is something that you want to do for your club. Go out there, try your best to get coaches to fill this slot. Eventually, you need to expand this group as well. So you're looking at expanding your staffing requirements. Your fitness training coaches also need to be better than what you're, you currently have. Right here, you've only got like a two and a half star. So you've got to edit your coach assignments. Can you move somebody around? And you can move this guy here. And you've got your fitness coaches now, four and a half, five and a half stars. So your fitness coaching just improved. Here we've got defending technical and defending tactical. So this area as well, you need to go out there and get a better coach. <laughs> I probably end up doing something like this. Right, so I got another star in attacking technical by mo shifting my my own attributes across, so this becomes stronger. Then Hakan Gas probably you can get another coach here. So you want to be looking at improving your coaching staff over time. So you get better stars in your in this area. This is a very important area. Uh, your your coaching area is under staff in the under 19s. You really really need to do something about this. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to improve um, some of your coaches. I would focus on defending tactical and technical coaches for now to improve this and getting another possession technical coach. As far as training is concerned as well, looking at all this, I don't see a reason why they should be on normal intensity. Use a mouse over, uh, shift them all to double intensity and you, you'll find that your some of your players' workloads are still light. This is a reflection of your training schedule is kind of light. So you go to your schedules, uh, rather your training schedule over here in your calendar, you know, this, yeah. these guys are having quite a fun time. You don't need so many rest sessions for under for the under twenty one. So you can give them a slightly more aggressive uh, a session. You you can just add on transition press, transition restrict. Uh, let me go to technicals. You just add a transition press. It's forty forty. It helps with the whole team. And then here technical transition restrict. And uh, you know, we can even do one set piece uh, delivery. And this 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 week becomes nice and heavy for them. We don't want it to be too heavy though. Okay, so we can go in there, work on the mental side of the game for our players. All right, so they they get they are all this this will work on their mental attributes. So bang. Like, and you'll be surprised, this is not that heavy itself. So match practice in the middle of the week, not really entirely gonna be necessary for your team. So we can do general uh physical and here general outfield and then we can get, yeah we can stick one recovery in so this is a fairly decent schedule for the team uh they got two sessions of rest before the match day not and again not necessary uh we can do attacking corners here 
as a whole, this is not going to be a very heavy schedule. You can just check it out and try it out and you'll find that this isn't too heavy. So you want to fill these up for your under-21s. Keep this going and, you know, uh, have more. Uh, all you need basically is three rest sessions a week. That's all. One rest after the game. So you got one rest, like one rest day. And then maybe two rest sessions like this. And then fill these two up, right? Another thing that you can do, all these players that have got three and a half star to four star potential, look at the player and then, you know, identify, give, these guys are 19 years old, right? They need to play football or they have to go on loan, right? So players like this, transfer status, make them available for loan, right? And then confirm this, get out of here, uh, look at his position. Uh, how do you see him playing in your system? This is important because you need to know how he fits into your overall system. So here, at the moment, he probably can't play for the team, right? So he has got to develop. And if I'm looking at his attribute development, it has not been fantastic, right, in the last couple of months. So 12 months ago, not that fantastic. In fact, he has uh, degraded in bravery. He's degraded in some areas. So generally, and this is surprising, physical, very bad. This, uh, this is a reflection of bad coaches, not the player himself, because most young players, they'll have exceptional growth in physicals. Right, just this is definitely got to do with your schedule. Your schedule is way too light. So what I will do is uh, I will look at him. I'll give him attacking, uh, maybe uh, training with a Mazala because in your tactic you have room for a Mazala. Here we got a DM uh, player MC, very very talented. But look at his physical attributes. They're way, uh, they're just, they just they just need a lot of work. So here we'll do um, strength and endurance. So it works on stamina. Then we can work on something like a uh, box-to-box -box midfielder. This covers a lot of attributes. Not ideal, but you can go to his training and development. This, this a lot of attributes are not going to be worked on. Alternatively, we can choose something more simple for him, like a central midfielder on support or a Carrillo. But the Carrillo will not hit these attributes, which are important. So what we want is more, more f a broader development in him. It might be just a one point increase in some of these attributes, but he's at the age of uh, he's at an age where he can improve. And this guy's got a lot of potential to play in your team. So you got to try and get his uh, training up. His training rating is only six point seven five. Another thing you want to do is criticize him. His personality, his determination is probably quite low. He can do with some criticism. <laughs> you know, you bump. You need to push some of these players. So you can see quite a number of players don't. You're not focusing on developing them. So if I was managing the safe, I'd be squarely focused on getting the best out of my players because when you don't have a lot of money, you need to make money. And you can only make money with the players that you have, right? You gotta teams have got to come in interested in your players. So you got Mirza Chan. Remember, we just changed the training schedule, right? So now we give him a bit more to do. So what can he do? He's a midfielder center, can play wide. Uh, he's got some flair. He's got de very good determination. In fact, he's a determined player. It's going to be a waste if you don't develop him. Balance, stamina, this is all going to go up in time. Uh, his off the ball is really poor. His position is really poor. So basically, he doesn't, he's not going to add a lot of value going up and down to your team, right? He's, he's, not, he's, not, going to, he's not going to bring anything to the game, right? So we got to attack. Either the defensive position on the side of his game or his attacking movement. One gives us off the ball anticipation decisions. The other one gives us marking positions and decisions. At the moment, okay, uh, his decision making is pretty solid, right? But what we want is improvements in and so here we get anticipation off the ball. Two areas that we can do with a lot of improvement. So anticipation and off the ball. That's good enough. Hopefully, in time, he can also improve his positioning. So, this is one area of the game that he we can work on. So, you got to identify these players. The other thing that I noticed was, if I went I went to your senior team, you are short of central defenders, right? So, look at your central. This is one player who shouldn't be playing in the under-20s. He should be playing in the senior team. So, training and development. I'm looking at him going, DM, nah, we need central defenders. So, I, I'll, I would turn him into a ball-playing defender on defense. So he's got decent jumping reach. He's 1.84 in height. So he's got room to grow. Then we give him uh, we give him strength training. He improves his jumping reach and his strength. And voila, we've got uh, we're gonna be working on this guy uh, and developing him, and then we'll move him to the senior squad. So we give him a chance to play with the big boys. 
Uh, we then uh, you this club also has another problem. You don't even have full, full backs in the main team. You've got uh, two full backs who are 32 and 33. So you got to have a long term strategy of developing full backs. And trust me, full backs are very hard to get in this game, like top tier full backs, and they're very valuable. So, so if I were you, I'd be I'd be developing my players along a certain path. So this this is something that you really need to do with your safe. So here we got Yunus as well. Pretty exciting player. These players, the, the more football they play, they're just going to explode and they're going to become very, very uh, players that are going to be targeted by a lot of clubs. All right? So they become extremely valuable. So you want to develop them along a similar path line. So here we, I notice you're training him as a Traquatista in attack. Now attacking midfielder left, right. Um, I would... Train him as an inside forward because I want to, you know, in your system, you might want to play him as an inside forward because I looked at your tactic and it's pretty interesting. So here we have an inside forward on support. His bravery is not going to go up, but he's got dribbling, finishing first touch, long shots, passing technique, vision off the ball, flare, composure, anticipation, acceleration, balance, pace. What about his work rate? Now, maybe you want to, if you want to improve his work rate, go here, stamina and work rate. Now, this works on stamina and work rate. So, Train them in attributes that are going to help your team as a whole. So we've got and we've working on off the ball for the players that are creators. We're working on positioning for the ones who are defenders. We're working on uh, off the ball and positioning for those who are playing support duties. We're also going to be working on things that work great for players who are up high, playing high up the pitch. So we, we, the development of your players is a bit more focused. So we looked at train. Now let's take a look at your tactic. Now this is there's something about your tactic that just you know bugged me the moment I saw it. You play a four two three one wide home. This is your four two three one, and you've got a li my liquid system as well. Let's not deal with this first. Let's deal with this. You've got a lot of personalized instructions. I'm not a big fan of this because every time I bring a subsidy on, I've got to, I've got to crack my head to figure out what's happening in my tactic. So what I normally recommend most people do is just remove all your personalized instructions. Just just play the player. Okay, because you don't want your tactic. It's, look, I removed the personalized instructions and the tactic becomes something else altogether. Now it's a CM support, DLP on support. And I'm like, uh, I'm like going, okay, so how does this tactic not play? So you've got a lot of interesting instructions. You've got prevent short goalkeeper distribution with a more urgent press, getting stuck in place, attacking hard, standard line engagement, which is basically inviting the players near your near the halfway line before you cross, higher defensive line. Uh, your players are pretty uh, high up the pitch, right, to support the midfield. And then you've got a counter press, which pushes these players forward, increasing the gaps here. You've got a whole shape, which is not bad for possession-centric tactics, but this is where everything starts to become a bit strange. Okay, you play out of defense, but you're telling your goalkeeper to distribute the ball quickly to the fullbacks. Now, while it's okay, but what's the what, what's the point of doing this, right? Are you are you trying to create really strong, fast counters with your goalkeeper? Then you look at your tactic. How's that gonna work? So goalkeeper passes it to him. His guy is quite far forward, so he's gonna have to pass this way. And then the goalkeeper passes it to him. This guy is an inside forward and support, DRP on support. Maybe he'll pass it here. Then I'm looking at the play instructions. You got take fewer risks, get further forward, and stay wider. Hmm, still doesn't make any sense. Now is now why don't you play a wing back if that's what you want to do? Alright, so why take fewer risky passes and stay wider? You don't need if he stays wider and these both these players are staying wider, you tell your goalkeeper to find two players who are quite far away from him. All right. So my experience, I suggest let the goalkeeper decide what he wants to do because the moment you face a high press, pretty much goalkeeper distribution, your goalkeeper is in trouble because you have told him exactly what to do with his passing. So I will just remove it. Right now, here we've got these are fine, but there's a lot, a lot of movement happening in your tactic. You got AM and support who's playing direct passes. You got IF sitting narrower, sitting in this area, but IF's typically are going to cut inside when they have the ball. You got a wing back, you're hoping he stays wider because you want him to overlap. But he's going to overlap anyway, so you don't need to stay wider. Unless, look at Nagatomo, gets forward whenever possible, plays one-twos. 
All right, so you, inside forward coming this way, DLF dropping here, holding the ball. But where are, is your movement happening? So there's not a lot of movement happening. Lots of possession, that's for sure. But you're not going to get a lot of movement because whole shape and counter press is going to give you a lot of possession. So if I'm now looking at the matches that you played, you play against Zenith. You use this tactic against Zenith. You have lots of possession. But Zenith had all the goals. Because the, the, the counterpoint of doing a tactic like this is when you have the ball in your opponent's half, it's very important that you keep the ball in the final third, which was something that you were not doing, right? So you had a corner, your players, your defenders jumping reach is 13, 14. It's a problem for your whole team. You can't defend from corners, you can't defend from crosses, but you, you are telling other teams to attack you down the flanks and deliver crosses into your box, which is a bit counterintuitive, right? So uh, here we have a, an attack that you started, Nagatomo, notice the gap. Inside four gets the ball, who can he pass the ball to? So he's going to try diagonals, right? Or he's going to, luckily he can pass to Belhanda. Belhanda gives it to you. So this is what I mean by you have to be able to keep the ball. So Mariano comes forward. He's only, his acceleration is very, not very fantastic. He plays the ball out to Nagatomo. Nagatomo loses the ball. This guy is counter pressing. <laughs> he chases after him to try to win the ball back because that's exactly what you told your team to do. And bang, you can see that a goal. So when you play the counter press, you got to realize what it does to your own tactic, right? Players are going to step forward in order for them to win the ball back. So it's important that your players win the ball. If they can't win the ball, then they can't afford to lose the ball when you have possession of the ball. So th this game, you were beaten by counter attacks. It's just the, the nature of the beast of your tactic that you created in the first place, which is urgent, which we, you had urgent pressing, you had tackle harder. So players are leaving their positions with counter press on and they're just trying to close players down and bang, you open yourself up. So there was not a lot happening. So what I would recommend you do is, this role should be something that drops a bit deeper. This role can punch through the middle and probably you need somebody attacking the spaces here and you need some form of control in, on one side of the pitch in order for you to keep the ball. Now, here we have a liquid, my liquid 4-1-2-3. Now, this is Liverpool's liquid 4-1-2-3 and only Liverpool can play this tactic. <laughs> I hate to say this, but Liverpool played this really well. But I've no, no, you had more direct dribble more. I would remove this, I'll remove this, I'll remove this. Okay, then you go, uh, I have these in my system. Mazala attack, dribble more, yes, I have that. Close down more, tackle harder, maybe. Okay, DM, dribble less, no, no. Then take fewer risks, dribble less, no, I definitely don't have this. Okay. And then you, you've changed the tactic somewhat, so you try to make it a bit different, but premier short goalkeeper distribution is going to invite trouble because if your team isn't very good, preventing the goalkeeper from bringing the ball out, then you're just going to have four players out of position, your midfield open to, account, uh, to an attack. So don't do this if your team is not that good. So then you, what I normally do in most of my matches is I play like this. When I start a game off, right? I'm playing on a positive mentality, passing directness is not so super short. Then I hit early cross and play out defense. Run at defense is situational. If my players can dribble, they run at defense. If they can't dribble, I take that off. Basically, that and other things as well. If my team isn't very good, when Stady Bridge uses the same system, I actually have Anchorman and Traquatista. Anchorman holds the defense in check, uh, supports my defense, and Inverter Wingbar will come into this position to protect the space that Mazala is using. The Traquatista will drop in, link up, play, and then and get into the box to try and score. The inverted wing backs comes in comes up here to help and occasionally get in, into the attacking areas. And these two players actually have cut inside with the ball as a player trait, but you yours don't. So they're actually gonna play as orthodox wingers. So you might you might want to think about how you could change the tactic for your own team. Or if you wanted to play them as a wingers, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you 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 need to understand the the impact a tactic like this can have on your system. So how did we do with you, your little safe? Well, I was left with a daunting task in your Champions League group to beat Olympic Lyon by three clear goals in order for us to, you know, make it through to the next round. Unfortunately for us, you had lost to Zenith 3-0 in the previous game and that kind of made it very difficult for us. We didn't do too, we didn't do too badly. We went to Lyon. We used uh, my version, a uh, slide that the version that I'm recommending that you choose for Liquid. And, uh, well... We did better. We managed to control the game. 
54%. We had a few long shots, but uh, we had more, we had better chances in and around the box. Uh, we created some decent shots on target uh, for Galatasaray. As you can see, all inside this area. We had some outside the box, but Olympic Lyon uh, shunted wide. The strategy of keeping them wide worked. Uh, in terms of the goals, we I wasn't too unhappy with the way we played. We played reasonably well. Uh, we could have beaten Olympic Lyon by 3-1, three, three in fact. Uh, here, they broke through. Nice passing movement. Mariano scores the goal. And then they scored one over the top. And then our attack again. Square pass to Yunos. Yunos scoring a goal 2-1. This was a good result. This was a superb match. Galatasaray versus Fenerbahce. This game should have been 4-0. We completely dominated and abused Fenerbahce at home. Right. So we spent a lot of time in midfield keeping the ball um, with slight tweaks to your with slight tweaks to your system. Uh, and we did okay again. Uh, I have to admit that um, there were many chances. We had a few clear we had some chances that should have been buried in the back of the net. Again, good move. Nagatomo played here to Feguli. Uh, he scored the first goal and then a corner. We scored a second goal. There should be three. There should have been three or four goals in this match. Just looking at the shots that we generated inside their half. This is us against them. Their goalkeeper had a shocking time. It was playing the man of the match kind of football. But this is every single shot that we generated against Fenerbahce inside their box. Let's, again, watch this there. We got, oh yeah, we have one shot hitting the wood. I forgot to click that one as well. But this is all the shots that we generated. This is what Fenerbahce had. Not much by way of attacks. So we played them and defeated them. I, I can't pronounce this name. I'm not, I'm not even going to try. This is a Turkish Cup. We won this 5-1 handsomely uh, using the 4-2-3-1 against a very defensive system. Complete demolition. Then Bashak Shir. Okay, this game, another good game for us. Uh, again, using the 4-2-3-1. So I'm coming. The thing here is that I would recommend that you play four two three one at home and like a DMB system away from home because your your problem at the moment is actually going to be your um, the lack of height in your in your defense. So you got to address those two concerns. So you got to play with the team. Um, you got to be a bit more defensive in your Champions League matches, playing a four one four one or a four one two three. At home, you can definitely romp to the league title playing a 4-2-3-1. But away from home, that's not going to be ideal. So this is how we set up the liquid system. We actually use the wingers here. Well, it doesn't really make a difference to me, but I would definitely recommend using uh, maybe inside forward for one of these positions. We've got roaming playmaker, Mazala, winger. Closing down more, tackle harder, mark tighter on these two. But these guys, I think uh, we left it dribble more, close down more, tackle harder. R roaming playmaker, I removed all this actually. I uh, didn't use any of those. Uh, then we got anchor man, inverted wing back. I removed all this as well. I wasn't playing with this in the game. I removed all these shouts. All right, so again, pass it shorter, take few risks. You can have these, but I didn't bother. Um, I, remove, I have a habit of removing all PIs when I play with a new team. Uh, these were your shouts. Now here, once again, pass into space is situational. Hit early cross um, is when teams give you the space. And run at defense if your team can keep the ball. Right? So if your team boys can't dribble, they lose the ball, just you know, please remove this. Uh, now we play with a higher line of engagement, standard defensive line. Again, some teams have just dropped it down to a standard line of engagement to draw them out. Lower line of engagement to draw them even further into my half before I hit them. But most of the time, if I want to go and camp, I'll just go high line of engagement and start camping. And uh, we kept it this way. But overlap, overlap, pass into space. Maybe if I want to break a team down, I could do this. So there's so many ways. You've got to understand what shouts actually do. right? Here, the overlap left and overlap right are going to influence these two players. So can you do that with these two players? The question mark is Mariano. Mariano's acceleration is only 11. So in my book, nah, not really. So I'm more likely not to play the overlap shot with this guy. So I probably removed this. I was, I might overlap left with this guy. Lukaku, because he's got good acceleration, he's used, he's basically hopeless defending. Uh, well, you've done quite well. Position is stand is okay, I guess, in this in this save. But in some of the other saves, I've seen Jordan Lukaku just can't defend. And counter press and counter. Sometimes if I want to improve my possession numbers, I just go whole shape. 
to hold a lead. So you can do that with the custom liquid. In fact, I did this. Uh, I went whole shape towards the end of the match against uh, Olympic Lyon. Now here, the 4-2-3-1, DLF on support. Close down more, tackle other mark. Tighter inside forward is doing this. Winger on support, close down more, tackle other. But yeah, I'm using a shadow striker now. So shadow striker bombs in. I was using Almada as a shadow striker. Sometimes I use this guy as a striker. Or I might use, uh, you've got one more player who's pretty exciting. Um, I can't, I don't see him here, but he's uh, Diaz, I think his name is. Uh, there we go. You can also use this player. Sadas, Yunos, and then uh, in midfield, um, we got Fernando. I would typically use this guy. You can use him with Belhanda or Fernando and the other guy just took off. Yeah, this guy this guy can play here as well. Now, in defense, you, this is your problem. You got Markow, 13 jumping reach. So you you really have to play with this man. Uh, you got There's one of the reasons why you're training. You brought this guy to the first team to give him experience. You definitely need somebody. You need him to develop because you need options. And then uh, you've got uh, this player. You can play as a central defender. Then, and over time, you're going to have to develop these players as well. Your your left back department is, you got options, but your right back department, you're fairly weak. So if I were you, I'd look at scouting. Now, scouting is an area, is in one area of the game that I think you have another big weakness in. You tend to scout everybody. So your scouting assignments gives you a lot of unnecessary players because you can't afford half these players. I mean, you can't afford 80% of these players, right? So if I go down, you can only afford everybody below about 2.8 to 3 million, like 4 million. These are the only players you can afford. So when you set up your assignments, you got to ask yourself, why are you going to the Premier League, for example? Why do you need to scout Premier League? I would focus on scouting places like Serbia, Bulgaria, even South Africa. Talents are cheaper there. So if we create a new assignment, just be a bit more specific about you already want. So I normally go for very good. Um, I'll add a condition where the age of a player is, is between, say, 15 to about 19. Okay, add another one for his value. Value is at most maybe, say, let's go 7.5 billion, you never know. Specify the attribute value. So you, I want natural fitness to be about 12 and I want determination to be about 12. Now this gives will give you a lot of decent players, right? It's because of natural fitness and determination. You finish this and then maybe we'll focus on one nation, right? So here I'll just focus on Europe. Let's go for my three favorite countries, Serbia, Bulgaria. All right, I love these two. They give me so much talent. Portugal is not bad as well for cheaper players. I've got Serbia, Bulgaria, Slovakia, Bosno, so Govina. These are all places. And then duration, leave them there. There are academies in these countries. that Bulgaria is a very good academy. South Africa is a very good academy. So these academies sometimes churn out really good players. And they are cheap. I got, I got a player that's a five, wonder kid for £500,000 from South Africa. These players will come to your team in Galat. Will play for Galatasaray. There's no denying. There's no doubt in my mind that they will play for such a storied club like Galatasaray. Then start the assignment. So have your scouting scouts going out, ongoing to some of these high profile. I mean, these nations which can give you these kind of pro players. I would. I would not scout the Premier League or the Serie A. Mexico maybe, but uh, yeah, South, South American nations are also notorious because sometimes the players are quite expensive, but they may use Galatasaray as a stepping stone. This is one of the reasons when you sign them over, minimum fee, really, uh, they might ask for MRC, minimum release clause. And then if you sell those players, you have to have a next sale uh, clause in there. Uh, Reverdivacy is okay. Uh, here, this is just a general focus for players. This is just to general. <laughs> I would... Yeah, this is like too many, like, first touch, passing, I don't know, could I have done this? I don't think so. I don't. I would have definitely added conditions. This is just too broad, right? So, y you want younger players. So, add a condition. Always has scouted potential ability. Good. So, you don't get players you can't use, right? And I always have value. Value is at most 
7.5. So you're not going for expensive players, you're going for cheap players. Then you can have one the whole world for it. When one poor scout goes all over the world and he decides, oh my God, my boss is so mean. He's made me go all over the world, finish editing. So here, you want a minimum, I mean, I, there's way too many attributes. I don't like this. I, I prefer this, this method, 10. <laughs> 12. That's it. Don't add too many. You gotta get a lot of players. Then you can go through and see, okay, what are the attributes like? You know, whether they can fit into your system, whether you work, they were scouting even more, and finish editing, and then go out and then start the assignment. Uh, ongoing. He, this guy can just do uh, uh, continent, for example. We'll just send him to Africa. So all he does, he spends his entire life in Africa, sets a little room up in the Sahara Desert, and every once in a while he goes out to scout players. So something like this. Have a scouting plan. You are in desperate need for a right back. When I look at a short list, there is one player that you have targeted as a transfer. Lisandro Martinez. He comes in, he's jumping, he's only 13. He can be an anchor man. That's that's good. But a central defender? Nah. Ball playing defender, yes, but central defender, no. Why? Because his jumping risk is too low. He's not going to be an asset in the Champions League. As an anchor man or a defensive midfielder, maybe. Yeah, definitely I'll, I'll retrain this player. Then we got this other player as a Polish player. I would sign him in a heartbeat. <laughs> Robert Gum Gumni, right? Why? Because you don't have enough. But his acceleration is good. His strength is not so good. His passing is decent. He's got decent decisions. He's got room to grow. Uh, he's, both, he's definitely got a lot of room to grow. Uh, your knowledge level is already... Um, pretty decent. His personality is only the one that's bugging me. He's only balanced, right? But his determination is 11. His natural fitness is only 11. So, I would scout him a bit more to find out whether, you know, he, he, he could, he could improve over time. But, as you can see, Gamni is not too far away from some of the other players. You've got Daniel Bocanegra, uh, plays okay. he's never going to, I mean, he's probably not going to play again. But you definitely need somebody on the right to play. But he could be one option. You could end up signing him for about 6.25 million. But I wouldn't stop at this player alone. I would look for more players. Italy is not cheap. Some for some players, about 6.78 million. Serbia, Bulgaria, South Africa are really cheap. So you can find good players there for like 1 million, 500,000 easily. So I would start having a more refined scouting strategy in your game. So, uh, I hope that you found this additional Game Changer useful and uh, it helped you. If you have any questions, you guys probably already know where to find me. You can find me on the forums. There's my hand, Twitter handle. My, there's also my website. Once again, I want to thank all the, all the people who supported my channel. Uh, it makes it possible for me to do shows like this. And I hope to do more of these shows in the near future. So, you guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon and good luck with your safe. Bye-bye.